Okay, I'm making a mallet out of two inch thick white oak. The white oak I got from a sawmill in Woodstock, New York. It's been drying for a really long time. And the surface still has the bandsaw marks in it, which I need to remove. Which is why you see me planing it there. I just want to get it flat. Even though I got it flat, there's still a little bit of a twist in the wood. Which is why I kind of play it safe with the table saw and I have it cut halfway up and then halfway up. I was afraid it would bind if I tried to make a full depth cut. You can see it rocking around a little bit and that's because it's got a twist in it. But it's going to be gone. It's not important right now. This is going to be the two halves of the head of my mallet. And this is uh, the first piece I cut in the opening scene. It's going to become the handle to the mallet. And uh, here I am just laying out the sides and then the taper. I'm copying a mallet that I had uh, many years but has been broken so I'm kind of remembering the shapes of it. And uh, there it is, the taper. I'm bandsawing it. It's a safe, safe bet to use the bandsaw when I'm making a compound curve like that, like that, like that. It's a... Uh, there you go. Just bandsawing it. And um, that taper obviously is the most important right there, so I'm going to sand it a little bit and just follow that line. I have like a really, really sharp line. It's out of focus, but it's there. Now here, I'm, I'm kind of taking the safe approach by making uh, the pocket square first, and then geometrically I know that it's parallel to, to the universe of the mallet, and then I'll add the taper in it. So it's, it's easier for me to go from a square and then add the taper, so that's what I'm doing now. It's basically making a perfectly square channel down the middle of the mallet head by being able to get into it on either side. And you'll see here. So there, straight and straight. And so then I'm able to geometrically make the accurate taper. And uh, I'm using the sled, and by me putting a chunk of wood onto one side, of course I made sure I knew the size of the chunk, I'm able to kind of kick it up into the angle I need. And then I use that same chunk for the other side. And it's just a quick way to be able to make that angle work. And I'm also using the cut line in my sled as a guide so I know I have the marks coming up and they're visible on each end. And I'm just doing a test fit and uh, now I think I cut the next one. And there you go. And just by having that chunk of wood kick it up, it gives me the few degree angle that I need. I don't even know exactly what that angle is. I just kind of freestyled it. And I just want to make sure the tapers are the same so that the mallet head or that the mallet handle fits into it. Now that's I'm just using my Veritas shoulder plane to clean out the saw marks to make it nice and flat. And there you go. And it kind of fit together in one way perfectly. That's why I'm flip-flopping everything around and there it is. Making sure I remember how it goes. And uh, now I glue it. Just using Type-On. Type-On wood glue. And uh, just get it on the surfaces. Then I just use screw clamps just to get everything nice and strong. Screw clamps are, uh, I think they look good on camera, but they also work really well. Ready. Ready. Can never have enough. And here I am. I'm uh, going to put a little bit of a, a round over on that handle. And I don't want it to go all the way across all four sides. I'm just trying to get that, that round over to appear on two sides of the handle. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I'm going slow. And uh, just putting this, they're going to be the handle's end right there. And uh, just working it slowly. When it comes to lathe work, I go as slow as possible until I can get to where I want. Now I'm finally where I need to be. And I'm using a very rough paper. And uh, after I spun it, I kind of sand it straight. You'll see me do it on the head as well. It's sort of a swirl mark, which are kind of hard to avoid when the wood is spinning and you're sanding it. So, there I am. And uh, I think I'm liking it. Just do a test fit. Now the glue's dry on the mallet head. Fits real good. And now it's time to work on that. Find the center, which isn't hard. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jam off the corners, because I don't really like turning a square. Although it's possible, it's just... It's a lot of extra work when I can just cut that off on the bandsaw. 
was giving myself the guides and uh, then my bandsaw set to 45 degrees and I can just rough off the corners it makes the makes the lathe work a lot easier and it's a lot quieter <laughs> lathe working a full square is real noisy and uh, there we go now I'm just doing the lathe work and uh, I'm off and like I said this is a uh, I'm I take it slow, so you'll see me stop several times and make sure I don't want to go past where I need to. When it's spinning, it's very deceiving. It looks perfect. <laughs> when you turn it off, it looks unperfect. So you got to keep checking. And uh, I got a little chip out in the holes, the, the hole that the handle will go through. So off camera, I squirted some crazy glue around the hole just to make sure that it wouldn't chip out as much as it was doing. Crazy glue kind of secures the fibers in place. And now I'm getting ready to put my my impressions where the rings are going to sit. I'm going to put brass rings at each end of the, uh, the hammer. And I'm going slowly. I, I have my calipers to make sure that I'm going to be the right diameter. It's just under 3 inches because the outside diameter of the brass is 3 inches. And uh, I'm just checking. I leave it a little fat right now. I know I could always take it off later. And... Uh, now I'm working the other side, and uh, I play it safe by just taking a little piece off, a little piece off until I get to my size I want, a little piece, and then uh, I catch up with more. Of course, once I'm where I want to be, then I use that as my reference, that little shoulder. And there we go. And now I'm going to work the rest of the mallet back into like a curve to try and bring it back in visually because right now it's just a big lump. So I'm working the, that, the body there into sort of a football shape. And uh, just working it and working it. Trying all different tools. I'm always, I never know exactly which is the right tool for the job unless of course it's square. If it's, and then it's an easy decision. But, you know, you rough it out with little sharp chisels and then clean it up with the bigger ones and then sandpaper always helps. And uh, like I said earlier, no matter how fine a grit you use, you always end up with swirl marks. So regardless, you always got to go back in. I'm just doing a test fit. Now it looks good. Obviously I didn't spin it with that on there. Now I'll take it out and uh, just sand the hell out of it get it to where I want and then uh, once I'm done sanding it with the swirls I try and get all the uh, spin marks out of it by just going parallel to the grain and I'm happy and now this is a three inch brass tube I had to buy ten feet of it I only needed a foot of it when I first bought it for a lamp and I knew it would be the perfect diameter and I cut the first piece off because it's dented and now I cut two more pieces off about one inch thick and uh, cut super easy and there you go And uh, there you see my two rings. And then I just take them over to the sander. And I'm just using the reference of the side as square. I mean, I didn't cut them square. They're really crooked. But I'm using the reference of the bottom. So if you see me pushing inside the bottom of the ring, it's to make sure the bottom is flat against the table. And I put a little chamfer on the inside of one of each of the sides so that when I bang them on... Now, when I made that... Uh, the receiving ends on the mount, I tapered them a little bit so they fit on initially but then I have to bang them on more and here I am banging them onto the anvil bang bang and uh, I'm going slow just watching make sure nothing's breaking and uh, it really seated nicely and uh, I had all my measurements were really close and then I take it over to the sander and then I just kiss off the faces so they're nice and clean now this is the type of mallet that you'll use for like mortising and stuff like that. So those rings obviously would put dents in wood if you were planning on banging onto it, but it's really just a like a chisel mallet. I put a little uh, convex on the end of the top of the handle just to kind of make it fit with the, the football shape. And then I'm using Scotch Bright to clean up the rings. Just get the sharp edge off. I'm proud of my work. And I'm just using Brie Wax just to seal it and keep my fingerprints off it and uh, 
proud of my work. I'm happy the way this came out. I was really not sure what to expect. I had a vision and I was able to hit it right on the mark, so it doesn't happen every time. And this is just <laughs> paying homage. I think it was a, an old movie logo used to do this, and I just thought it would be a funny thing to do. And there's my mark. And there's my mallet. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe to our channel or send us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. Be sure to check out our other project videos or visit us on makezine.com.